Well then, gradually, by stages, the Lord launched me into a ministry of mass deliverance. And I've conducted ministries of that kind in Russia, in Kazakhstan, in Turkey, in New Zealand, in Australia, in at least a dozen nations. And I discovered that you can do it en masse. I'm not saying it's the best way, but when the needs are so desperate, you have to do what you can. And I've learned to instruct people, help them to identify their problem, show them how to be delivered, and pray for them. They will be delivered. Now, I want to answer some of the common questions. How do they come in? And my answer is usually through a moment or a place of weakness. The devil searches for the weak moment or the weak place to come in. Now, what are the moments or places of weakness? This is not an exhaustive list, but it will give you some understanding. First of all, prenatal. Many infants are born with a demon in them. And it happens because of something that the mother did or didn't do. And the greatest single problem that exposes children to demons, unborn children, is involvement in the occult. And I want to say, you cannot get involved in the occult in any form without being exposed to demons. There was a proverb that used to say, he, he who sups with the devil needs a spoon with a long handle. I want to tell you there is no spoon made with a handle long enough to make it safe to sup, sup with the devil. And I want to read from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18 in the NIV because the language is more up to date. This is what God says about the occult. That is involvement with any kind of spirits that aren't spirits from God. Uh, it's, it's written to to Israel before they entered the land. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 9. When you enter the land your, the Lord your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire. So the first kind of person is those who actually make their own children living sacrifices, presenting them in a furnace to the God Merlin. And I want you to understand, it's very important, all the other practices that follow are in the same category with offering your infant as a sacrifice to Monik. God doesn't put any distinction. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fun, who practices divination or sorcery. You know what divination is? Fortune telling. It's trying to discern something supernaturally by a spirit that is not from God. Every fortune teller is a diviner. If you've ever been to a fortune teller, you've been exposed to a spirit of divination. I remember dealing with a woman who needed spirit, deliverance from the spirit of divination. She said, I can't understand how it ever came into me. But I discovered that in the newspaper she regularly read the horoscope pages. That's all you need to do. None of you I know ever did that. Who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, which is rampant in the United States today, from the top of the nation downward, from the White House downwards, witchcraft is rampant. Or who casts spells, or is a medium, or a spiritist, or consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. And because of these detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. Anyone who does any of those things is detestable. If you go to a fortune teller, that's detestable. God puts it in the same category with people who offer their infants in sacrifices to, a, to, a, to an evil God. You might say, well, what's wrong with the occult? I'll try to explain it this way. When you get involved in the occult, you're making friends with God's enemies. And God takes note of that. And you have to repent, and you have to cancel any involvement if you want help from God. 
So that's, uh, let me give you an example, a, remar a remarkable example that happened fairly recently. A woman, a very fine Christian woman, came to me with real grief. She said, we've just had a letter from my son who's at college telling us that he's been a homosexual from the womb, that he was born a homosexual. So I began to talk to her and I said, uh, when you were pregnant with your son, did you do anything that's occult? Well, she said, yes. I tried to divine whether it was male or female, boy or girl. I had a pendulum suspended in front of my womb and I knew if it went one way it was a boy, it went another way it was a girl. I said to her, you exposed your unborn son to a demon by what you did. That's why he's homosexual from birth. Now she's a very solid Christian woman. She understood, she repented, and I believe in due course her prayers will bring deliverance to her son. But let that be a warning to you. You cannot fool around with the occult in any form or shape. And if you want a further definition of the occult, it's in my book.